Have you ever wondered what happens in the flight deck when there is a technical problem? Every day there are multiple reports from all over the world of aircraft malfunctions and other occurrences which never make it into the main newspapers. System failures and other malfunctions do happen on a regular basis, but that doesn't mean that the aviation is unsafe. On contrary, statistics show that the aviation is the safest means of transport and a lot of effort is put into making it even safer. In the center of the safety are the pilots and the set of strict procedures they follow in contingency scenarios. Let's have a look at some of them. When there is a technical issue with the aircraft prior to the departure, the captain needs to log it into the technical log. The maintenance personnel is then called to fix it, sign it off and the aircraft is released back into service. It is not always possible to fix all issues prior to the departure. For non-safety critical items, there is so-called Minimum Equipment List, or MEL. It lists all the items which can be inoperative prior to departure for the aircraft to be legally dispatched. If the aircraft experiences one of the faults which are listed in the MEL, the captain logs it into the technical log and calls the maintenance support. All the effort is then made to fix the malfunction before the departure, but if there are no spare parts or not enough time, the aircraft can be released into service with it. The flight crew then needs to strictly follow the MEL guidance and restrictions. The issue is then fixed at the earliest possibility within the time frame set out by the MEL. Example of MEL items are toilet inoperative, broken seat, inoperative windshield wiper, APU inoperative, and so on. If there is any malfunction after the engine start, the pilots need to follow the non-normal checklist in the Quick Reference Handbook, or QRH. The QRH lists all the possible envisioned malfunctions and non-normal situations. Situations requiring immediate action are part of the memory items. As the name suggests, memory items are a set of drills which are done by memory followed by a reference checklist in the QRH. The 737 has around 10 non-normal conditions for which the pilots need to accomplish memory items. And here are some examples like engine fire, engine surge, rapid decompression, airspeed unreliable or aborted engine start. In the event of a malfunction happening during the takeoff roll, there is another set of strict procedures. The runway length is limited and there is a risk of runway overrun when we would initiate a stop at a high speed. At a certain point, the airplane is too fast and too far down the runway to stop safely. The critical point is converted to a V1 decision speed. Any stop initiated above this speed will end up in a runway overrun. The decision to stop or go when there is a malfunction on the takeoff roll is based on a risk assessment. The risk of a failure is put against the risk of a runway overrun. At low speed, below 80 knots, the risk of overrun is very small and we therefore stop for any malfunction. Between 80 knots and V1 decision speed, the risks of a stop increase. We would therefore stop only for significant failures or non-normal conditions like fire warning, engine failure, predictive engine warning or if airplane is unsafe or unable to fly. Above V1 decision speed, regardless of the event, it is safer to continue the takeoff and deal with it in the air. This brings us to the next scenario. What happens when there is a non-normal situation after takeoff? At any given time, there is only one pilot flying the aircraft, pilot flying, while the other is supporting and monitoring, pilot monitoring. Each pilot has specified zone which he or she is responsible for, area of responsibility. Let's have a look at engine fire just after takeoff. At this stage, both pilots are solely concentrating on the flight path and keeping the aircraft under control. At around 400 feet above the ground, the pilot monitoring starts to identify the failure and calls it out. When both pilots agree on the failure, they systematically carry out the memory items in sequence and in accordance with their area of responsibility. Close crew coordination and clear communication is essential as the engine will be shut down and extinguished. You can only imagine what would happen if the crew shut down the other engine. When the memory items are completed and fire extinguished, 
there is now a good time for that mayday call to the air traffic control. We have no time to engage in lengthy conversation with them just yet, as the next set of tasks will follow quickly. First of all, the aircraft needs to be flown on a special engine out procedure to avoid any obstacles. Then, we need to accelerate and retract the flaps. When the flaps are retracted, we enter a holding pattern where we complete the QRH non-normal checklists. The aircraft is usually flown manually and only after the level off is the autopilot engaged. Pilot monitoring performs the engine fire non-normal checklist first. During this time, different systems are reconfigured for single engine flight. When the QRH engine fire checklist is completed, we need to do the after takeoff checklist and jump straight into another QRH checklist, one engine in operative landing. After that, we start to collect other essential information, including weather and runway state, so that we can make a qualified decision where to land. Not always it is possible to return back to the departure airport for weather or performance reasons. When the decision is made, we inform the air traffic control, our cabin crew, and only then we talk to the passengers and the airline. When all these steps are done, we perform single engine landing and as a precaution we are usually met with the firefighters on the ground. Single engine landings, while not normal, they don't pose a threat and evacuation is thus not likely. Among plenty of other things, these engine failure scenarios are part of our required proficiency checks which we do twice a year in the simulator. This way, we are prepared to handle the emergencies to a safe outcome and we do our best to keep the aviation as safe as possible. I hope that you learned something new today. If you'd like to know more about the aircraft systems and specifically more about the 737, download our 737 handbook app where you can benefit from interactive simulations, technical articles and videos.